It's yeah. not just I, you. I'm in the car. So he was like, you're the guy who normally does this. When there's a new link or there's a recording, I'm like, sorry, I'm in the car. You got to do all of it. And he's like, oh, that's great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Right? I don't like, you know what it is? I'm like, see, I probably like you, Peter. I like technology. I have no, pro I like using it. I don't like learning it. Like to me, I should look at something and it just goes. That's it. It should know what I want it to do. I agree. Yeah. And it's funny. It's it's funny you should say that because um, somehow uh, Outlook has changed slightly. And yeah. I'll yeah. be damned if I can get it to fix, uh, go back to the way I want it. So my uh, bookkeeper is pretty amazing at uh, having patience with me. Thank God someone does, eh? Yeah. <laughs> You too. I, you're probably ready to hang up and say, forget that. No, not at all. No, that's, that's the other even, thing we laughed. After we finished yeah. laughing at you, I told him, I said, you know what? I really like him. I, first off, he's a very nice man. He's a very kind man. And I said, you know what? He could be like our our Grandpa. special guest once a quarter to talk retail or even if they're just quick ones. Like today doesn't have, like I told you, this doesn't have to be a full on hour podcast. I mean, we, you got a topic that we're, we're dying to hear about. We really want to chat about. And if it's a 15, 20 minute cool YouTuber, let's go. Okay. Yeah. Plus, I th I'm assuming because I see your badge on, you got to actually work today, right? Uh, well, you know, as much as I do. <laughs> I, I, I'm i trying to get, uh, it's November 1st is always a crazy time because you've got, you switch from Halloween to Christmas, uh, Christmas, without, Christmas. Inter without really uh, disrespecting November 11th. I remember. Right. I, we, our rule was we weren't allowed to have like full display until the after the the twelfth. Well, we we what I do in my stores, I try and not have any true Christmas items, okay. you know, Christmassy items. So seasonal. We'll have lights and things like that, but the majority of it is uh, if it's full on Christmas, it sits till the twelfth. I think that's just the way it should be. I don't think there's any rush. There's far too much uh, blending, you know, yeah. it goes from, you know, like when you've got uh, July, I think was the first time I got back to school stuff. I mean, that, that's barely started the summer break. The kids just got out. Yeah. And who's shopping for back to school in July? Nobody. Well, we, yeah. And it just, it, you, you, then you have to scramble to try and sell out the summer candy that came at. Uh, yeah, I know. Sure. So. You know what? I, I don't know, Peter. I, you know, I, I, I mean, every year I laugh at it because I should be used to it by now. But you know, I hit Costco that first week in September, and it's already Christmas. I think, come on, guys. I mean, seriously. And I know people get excited. Whatever. There's, there's no rush. It's it's the same day every year. It's not going to well, change. Well, look at the Americans. There's there's they wait till the end of November to really kick off their Christmas push. Exactly. No, but. but you know, th there's a there is a cultural element. Like, it's, if you know any Filipinos, they start in September. Oh, is that right? It's uh, your wife. Can yeah, you do that? I, I can't. No, I I won't let her do it. Right. So, but she yes. says back home, that's what they do. Like, they start in September, and it just goes. Like, and I I said to her, I can't imagine listening to Christmas carols from September until. Like God help me, right? Like I don't like, know what I would do. It's a religious you know? sort of a do religious they? sort of thing, or a commercial. But, it, but it's a cultural thing too, right? So, yeah, so I do feel like you know we've kind of got a few things going here, right? So yeah, maybe um, Could, yeah. do do they uh, do do they celebrate Halloween and Remembrance yep. Day? Yeah, uh, not. I don't know about Remembrance Day, but Halloween definitely they do as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's pretty right? Yeah. Yeah. The uh the, the fun part about some of the internationals is is uh, telling them about our our uh, kooky Canadian um culture yeah. cultural things that we're doing all the time. So <laughs> things that we don't always understand ourselves either. So no, isn't that the truth? Yeah. And plus, like, the yeah. fun part is they're actually changing a little bit too because we have so many more diverse cultures coming in. Yeah. Everybody's bringing their own kind of cool things too. So there's there's always something going on. Well, you know what I want to do? I want to get a world calendar so that I can celebrate every Independence Day in the world. So that's with kind my, of fun. In my store, because we've 
like we were all we're we're lying we did a independence day for jamaica that was uh, mm -hmm. august and then we had um you know the indonesian group that was at uh cfha yeah in yep. april well they were going to be all organized to have product in my store for uh, august 20th which was going to be their independence day Mm -hmm. and uh it didn't work out and then the we had a party for the uh brazilians uh so i think that mm -hmm. was september 20th okay so it's uh there's a lot of uh fun cultural In, things india's we, independence is august 15th sorry which was that um, india. india india okay yeah yeah august 15th does but, cinco de mayo count yeah absolutely it's right, um, Cinco de Mayo. It, by showing a little bit of respect for every single um, cultural that uh, we're inviting into our country, I think yeah. it's going to go a long way to, to, to keep that uh, amazing connections going. I mean, we I don't want so. to be, we, we want crossover. Um, a lot of the stuff that I sell in my store isn't sold to just that international uh for sure. destination for sure people are shy. like we have a lot of uh, younger uh kids or well, kids everybody's a kid to me as a, as you know <laughs> but um we have uh young couples right that that love to come in and they you can see them wandering up and down the international aisles right mm -hmm. and that uh they're they're looking for the the next great thing um Mm -hmm. kosher mm -hmm. is kosher's got some amazing products uh and mm -hmm. with great flavor to it there's just mm -hmm. tons of cool stuff out there peter there really is and you know what the more people i mean the world's gotten very small obviously over the last 25 years people travel so people go and then they see and then they bring back yeah or try to do some importing or now that we have people coming into the country from, from an, a whole different set of areas they're bringing their own foods yeah cultures different things it's great well, they, um, I don't know if I ever told you about Kay. Um, Kay was the yeah. first um, Jamaican that I hired. And she went, she was going to school, needed a job. So I hired her and she act, She talked to me about Aki. And uh, through that one can, we she ended up getting her business degree. She now imports a full line of Jamaican products into oh, the country awesome. and sells to me. That's awesome. Pretty cool. Wow. Pretty cool. That's a really cool story. It, it oh, everything Peter is. does is a cool story. Jeez, Louise. Peter, you're like this walking cool story. Well, do you know what though? It's about uh, it's about embracing D, E, and I. You know, like all the diversity and inclusion yep. and all the rest that, that's going on now, right? Um, because it's I've become uh, kind of a destination. Yeah, for food. And, and the only way I, I truly know how to connect to people uh, is through food. It's a unique opportunity when you see the other day, there was a, a, a lady comes down the aisle and all of a sudden she's calling her mom over because we had the wafers from uh, Eastern European that you take uh, Nutella yeah. and you layer yep. it, you create this it's like a wafer and you just create this and, and it's their one of their main desserts in in oh, poland cool. and she's got this brilliant smile you know for five minutes there she's back home that's yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome hey so for for listeners um we've got peter boyd on who we know and love um and uh peter came back on for a a, a fast thought so i'm in the car kenny's in the chair um managing all the recordings today so if anything goes wrong with this it's, it's all on kenny fault. um yeah peter and i have done everything we can to equip him but if he fails technologically it's not our fault right peter we've done everything Absolutely. we could to help so. yes once i got signed on we were fine <laughs> peter coached me as best he could I, I, it's all in my hands now <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Uh, lovely hilarious. lovely so we had you on today because I, we just wanted you to come on. We didn't really care what the topic was. But if you did text or email that you do have a topic. I do. That you wanted do. to ch chat about. So mm. we thought this would be a great time to get you on. And tell us what's going on. Um, 
Well, as you know, I've spent lots of time doing work in the community. And, and one of my main goals is feeding kids. A uh, couple of not so fun facts for our community, which is we're, we're obviously very um, well to do. We probably have more high end cars per capita in Kelowna than we do in the lower mainland. Okay. But the, the problem we're running into is uh, food insecurity for our students. Uh, I work with a group, uh, well, several groups, but one in particular, uh, Food for Thought. Uh, they, uh, every Monday, um, we help them uh, with the food part of it, and they get upwards of 90 to 100 volunteers, and they'll pack uh, approximately 4,700 breakfasts, which, which will feed uh, 940 students uh, for the five meals, five breakfast. And then on top of that, uh, we're trying, we put together upwards of 300 backpacks. And, and the backpacks for those uh, are because we have to make sure that the kids are getting fed at home, right? We don't want, um, we don't want them to only get fed Monday to Friday. We want them to get fed, fed seven days a week. So it's some of the things that we're doing is we're, we'll do fundraisers, um, ask programs, anything we can do to help generate funds. Uh, there, the schools uh, collect funds from, um, from President's Choice Children's Charity, and then they help, uh, they donate, the charity donates to every school or a number of the schools. And it's a quite a large dollar amount that they donate and then that's all turned into food for through the Food for Thought program who manages it. And along with that, they also have a, a place called Helen's Acres. And it was a older couple that when his wife passed on, he didn't want to give the property up. It's in, I think it's 25 or 30 acres in the middle of Kelowna. Okay. And um, so he gave it to a church to manage for them and anyone that uh, wants to use it can grow vegetables on the property and then use it for nonprofit organizations so chloe who is just an amazing um young lady that is in charge of food for thought uh, she grows all these kind of uh, fresh vegetables to put into the backpack program. So it's, it's a, um, she gets it from, from all over. Plus uh, a number of the local vendors or local farmers and that will support us with fruit and, and vegetables as well to help fill in some of the blanks that we have. So one of the things that I'm working on right now is I'm trying to figure out how to get these backpacks to the families without having the grade ones and twos trying to carry home a, 20 pound bag of potatoes. Uh, so nice. we're, we're, we're going to get, we're, we're going to see if we can't get volunteers like the meals on wheels type of idea. Right. 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 And yeah, we'll, drop off, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take it to each school. We'll get however many that they request. And then we'll have one person uh, go to that school and make the five or six deliveries. Um, as it uh, as it's needed at least that way we can get the the food out to the families uh, a couple of years ago i was at a just before easter um we had gone to a school in fact i think it was more than a couple of years it was probably in 2020 i think march of 2020 just before COVID set in yeah and we were talking and so I was talking to some of the kids and you know, this one particular child didn't want to have the two weeks off at Easter. And I said, why, why would that be? And they said, well, we don't always get fed. And that just absolutely breaks your heart. It's terrible, right? In our, in our society. Yeah. I mean, think about all the money that's out there and all the money that's being spent. And, and we have these, these kids are, you know, 
struggling. Like the, the BC government, I think they, somewhere around $214 million, they donated to the program, which is a substantial dollar amount, right? But when you think that there's 580,000 students, it chews it up pretty quick, you know, and then you figure um, each breakfast is going to cost around $2.10 to make. Um, the backpacks, we try for tw uh, for 20, but if we can get a little bit more, then we'll put a few more items in. Right. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it, it's it, it's sad when we think our the future leaders of our uh, uh, of our country um, we're asking them to to succeed and we can't even feed them you know some of the things that you hear about when when the kids are, are at school right I mean first of all when you when you put a, a, a food program out there you have to put it out there for everybody mm -hmm. because if you don't it become there there's a stigmatism that comes for along sure. with it Yep. And you'll find that more uh, kids that are hungry will go without than kids that probably uh, are, are maybe being fed at home because they don't they don't think about it. They don't think about the stigmatism. And you have some of these poor kids that are, you know, if you don't offer it to everybody, you know, they're not going to eat. And that's just, you know, it's just wrong. It's um, terrible. You know, they have... Um, they, I talked to a, a school and, um, you know, if, if we can feed our kids, you know, you're going to get improved, uh, concentration, um, w when they're hungry, they're not thinking about learning. Um, nutrition allows, uh, proper nutrition, uh, allows the, the mind and body to, uh, get stronger. Well, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Peter, are you doing this every Monday, as you said? Is this like every Monday? Every Monday. So every Monday, there's like 900 and some kids that you're trying to feed, in essence, for the week, at least the breakfast. Yeah. And then the backpack. And how long has this been going on? Years. It just keeps growing. Uh, yeah, the sad part is I'm, I'm sure it does. And it's going to get sure worse. Now, are you finding, what is it, Peter? Is it, is it, is it? Is it people in the community who've just hit hard times? Is it people that are new to the country and haven't um, been able to find employment yet? Like, is it a just a smattering of just all the social issues we seem to have these days? I think there's uh, no one contributing factor. Mm. I think it's made up of lots of different, you know, it's when you see the um, however small it was the the rate of unemployment creeped up right you know um there's i'm sure there's people that aren't in the system that aren't even figured into either working or not working but to me it seems like everybody is like gas is ridiculous um uh, accommodations are are you know through the roof and I, I quote one of the one of the uh, groups that I from the lake uh, the food bank. You know they they tell their their participants, don't worry about, don't make a decision whether you're going to pay your rent or your heat or eat. We'll supply you with the food part. Right. And you know I I can't imagine having to make that choice. No, it's not in my world of comprehension to be honest. So, either. So I, I'm I'm relaying a story that I've heard, um, so I, I don't have any way of you know kind of being super factual about it. But I, you know, from the people that have relayed this story, I, I think it's pretty factual. But like the food banks, even where I live in Mississauga, you know, we're we're kind of like right behind Vancouver in terms of like cost of living and rent and everything. And there are people who make solid white collar job money right so kind of uh high high um you know 90s or or you know kind of like early hundreds that are at food banks because they've got to prioritize you know because because um 
the story that I was told was was um, that a couple that was lining up for food at a food bank in Mississauga, like one of them's a project manager at a at a big company, uh, and the other one um, works in IT. And between them, because of um, housing and all those other things, it w- it really came down to look like we we've got to pay for shelter or we pay for food, right? And and they look, look we've got a we don't have a choice if we don't have anywhere to live. It's it's pretty it's going to be pretty bad. And then you know it's it's even worse because we won't be able to do the jobs that we do, right? Because we can't stay in the area that we're in. We can't you know there's this really terrible spiral. So, but I, I, you know, like a combined household income of like a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars and they are lined up at the food bank for food, um, is a real head shaker to me. Is you know, like I, I, I just don't, think I don't enough understand. Yeah. I just don't understand. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm lucky enough that I maybe I, I well, no, not maybe I don't have to worry about that, but I, I do. You know, it is one that you kind of go, I, I don't, wow, like, right, yeah. So well, obviously, I don't think any of this is obviously unique to any of our communities. For you specifically in in Kelowna, Peter, like if we have uh, listeners that are, that are, that mm-hmm. are in Kelowna, is I guess how would how can they help or. How could they get a hold of whomever they get a hold of? And then obviously, if you're in the other communities, any of your local food banks can always use our help. Always. Yeah, use help. Absolutely. And, you know, I'd, I I personally don't care where they give as long as they give. And, right. And what I'm finding is some of the some of the ones that want to give aren't really sure where. In the in the links to to the to this recording, we'll have. Um, you know, probably the food banks in our local community. So within Kelowna and that area, we'll put a Vancouver on, put a Mississauga. Um, you've got names, Peter, that we've picked up through the podcast that we'll uh, attach links to. So if people do want to contact somebody, um, they can contact you because you can help direct. Yeah. And you said there was a Chloe, I think, at the um, at the organization. Yeah, Food for Thought. Food for Thought. And then there's yeah. the people at the food bank in uh, Lake food Country. Banks. Lake Country and at the Central Okanagan Food Bank. And if they if they're coming into your store, Pete, if I do some shopping in the store, can I leave um, um, stuff behind that you guys will put into the into the kids' uh, breakfast oh, things? Oh the- my goodness! I'll I'll drive it over there. We they <laughs> they come and pick up from us every Monday. Okay. And uh, if we need to do extra deliveries, and we can do that too. Okay, awesome. So the it, it's like. Pretty much as long as you're open, it's open. Right. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, young man. I think I think that wraps that up. You should go back to work. At least they can try to find you. They may have thought you've gone to take a nap somewhere or I don't know, gone for an extended coffee break. I don't know. I don't know what you're entirely possible. Eh? Well, they, it's, 